Welcome back, foxy mamas and jive turkeys. <laughs> Today we're taking it back to simpler days, when the streetlights announced it was time for mom's home cooking, and hungry kids across America happily ate with the family without complaint. <laughs> Today we're serving the king of TV dinners, with a twist, homestyle meatloaf. So before you turn that dial, you must know this isn't your average meatloaf. Why you ask? Well just sit back and you'll hear a tale. A tale of a funky glaze. Not that kind of glaze. <laughs> I'm talking far out, groovy, out of sight. The stuff that will loosen the gears on that stone fox you've been dating. What's that? She got three kids of her own? All of them with hair of gold? Hmm. Maybe just Channel 4 and chill with Alice instead. <laughs> Alright, I know what you're thinking. This is supposed to be a cooking channel. So let me give you a little history so you don't think I'm just loafing around. There's some controversy, but it's believed that the earliest version of meatloaf emerged in medieval Europe around the 5th century. And undoubtedly, many countries have since developed their own interpretations of the dish. Not only is it a clever way to make use of scraps, meat, bread, and veggies, but each culture's use of spice made it their own. It wasn't until the late 19th century that Americans really took the concept and ran with it. Through the Great Depression and into World War II, Meatloaf fed families on a budget and helped conserve for the war effort. But it wasn't until the 1950s when Betty Crocker published recipes that Meatloaf became synonymous with American culture. And the rest, as they say, is history. It's time to put the loaf into the oven and while it's baking, I'm going to give you the lowdown on my special glaze. It only takes these two ingredients, a can of cranberry jelly and a jar of chili sauce. And believe me, it is dynamite. <laughs> Something groovy happens when you combine that mild chili sauce with the sweet tangy goodness of the cranberry jelly. And I do understand that the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. What might be right for you may not be right for some. But when your taste buds get a load of this tangy goodness, you'll be brought back to that better time. When meat was meat and people proudly drove shagging wagons. What we're doing now is glazing the loaf before we put it back into the oven for another 20 minutes. So now's a good time to reflect. Sometimes I ask myself, why do I do it? Why do I put all this effort into creating something that will be gone in just a few days? Well, the answer, my friends, is blowing in the wind. And speaking of blowing, if you're making this for a first date and you didn't ask if they're vegetarian, you blew it. <laughs> Look at that. Centuries in the making. All those years of trial and error by hundreds of different cultures has led up to this very moment. Damn it. <laughs> well, sometimes you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both and there you have the perfect meatloaf. <laughs> Not to sound cocky, but whether you're scratching and surviving or hanging in and jiving, you're going to want to put this meat in your mouth if you catch my drift. I guarantee it's the best meatloaf you've ever eaten. But don't take my word for it. Make it yourself. Impress your friends and family and build self-esteem while honing a lifelong skill. And like I always say, fish don't fry in the kitchen, beans don't burn on the grill. It takes a whole lot of trying just to get up that hill. <laughs> if the sight of that doesn't wet your taste buds, then do what I do and take it to the next level. It's the big one, Elizabeth. The meatloaf sandwich. Warm, toasty bread, slathered with cool mayo, Sliced tomatoes and lettuce, an onion, which I forgot to put on. <laughs> My advice to anyone new to cooking, if given a chance, take it. If there's a rule, break it and make your dreams come true. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>